Hello and welcome to another episode of MMOFTW here on MMORPG.com. I'm your host, Bill Murphy, and this is the week that was at MMO News. Now starting right off the bat, we finally get some news out of Bless and developer NeoWiz. They've released a brand new cinematic trailer to pave the way for next week's announcement of the Korean open beta schedule and the road to a final and eventual release. At this point, there is no news of an English server or any announced release plans outside of Asia, but uh, on the down low and everything like that, they've been telling us for years that it will eventually make its way to America. We just don't know when. Hopefully it'll do so faster than Blade and Soul has. Now, Bless scrapped earlier beta plans for a pair of focus tests to get feedback on various systems, and as a result, some big changes have been made to customization, a brand new race has been added, significant alterations to the combat system have been made, and there are now simpler, low-level dungeons to get, player into, to get players into the dungeon system of the game. You can find out uh, all this and more uh, on the Bless page at, game, at uh, MMORPG.com, and you can head over to MMO Culture and Steparoo to get some more uh, hands-on and uh, game time and stuff like that with the Korean version uh, that's been in closed beta recently. And moving right along to another incoming Korean game, we have Black Desert Online news. This week, uh, on the official DOM Communications European and North American forums, it was announced that uh, some a lot of changes are coming to the Black Desert Online closed beta and eventual release. Um, well, essentially, the um, the advanced the advanced uh, the the project manager. PM uh, Belsazar is what is what his name is on the forums. He he came back with all this feedback and everything like that from the closed beta one, and he says that uh, they've made a lot of changes in time for a closed beta two, um, including a party play revamp, so that the more players you have in your party, the more experience you will get. So now there's actual incentive to group up and go hunt monsters and take down challenges and things like that with other players. So uh, no more are you going to be punished if you party with somebody and decide to go out and do some grind and things like that, you'll actually get a lot more experience. In effect, you'll be able to level a lot faster to the soft cap. Uh, additionally, they're adding some field boss drop changes so that people that are actually killing these 40-person uh, raid bosses and open-world raid bosses will actually all get loot based on their contribution to killing the monster. And with the energy system, and this is of particular note because it shows you that they've uh, taken notice of the problems that other uh, games that use an energy system or a labor system, as it were, have had with uh, labor potions being available in the cash shop, those will not be in Black Desert Online. I mean, who knows if they're going to add it somewhere down the road, but as a result, energy potions will not be sold in the cash shop. In addition... It is currently being discussed to add a system that allows players to consult an NPC that will magically transfer your unused energy on your character into an energy potion, which then can be sold on the marketplace to other players. So you could take your energy if you're about to log out and you're like, well, I don't need this energy right now, convert it into a potion, sell it on the marketplace while you're offline, and make a little bit of money in the time. It's pretty nice. Uh, so ultimately, this will lead to a shift of energy and allow people to collect energy over time to utilize it when needed. All good stuff, and hopefully we'll hear more about the Black Desert Online closed beta 2 in the coming weeks. And in Chronicles of Illyria news, for those of you who aren't aware of what Chronicles of Illyria is, it is a huge, a hugely uh, ambitious sandbox MMORPG in development from Soulbound Studios. This week they released a design journal talking about the value, the actual literal value of a life. Um, well, here, I'll just put it in Jeremy's words. Now, let's assume you die more frequently, maybe once per week. Each death would shave off the same two days of playtime. As a result, every seven days would actually count as nine days of playtime. If you divide the average of 354 by 9, you get approximately 39 weeks. What am I talking about? In Chronicles of Lyria, your characters grow old, they age, they die. If you get killed in adventure, they die. And you actually have to buy a new life from the game. That's essentially how the subscription system works. You subscribe by buying lives for your family and for your characters. Um, it's a very interesting look at an extremely unique system coming to Chronicles of Illyria. Uh, a great way to handle permadeath, but obviously it's going to be controversial. Um, so if you want to read more about it, I highly recommend going over to the Chronicles of Illyria site 
which I've linked in the uh, in the comments down below. So be sure to take a look at that. There's a whole lot of great information on Chronicles of Illyria on their website, and it is definitely one of our most anticipated games uh, at MMORPG.com. And in Shards Online news, uh, player-run merchants are coming to the pre-alpha 3, and this is pretty cool because it's it's kind of a unique way to do things um, with the player-run merchant system. Not all, on, not at all, unlike uh, maybe good old school Anarch or Ragnarok Online. Only instead of you having to sit there, you can actually hire a merchant that can run around and sell things for you. Uh, in Derek's own words, you will find one wandering merchant. You know, stepping around Eldare Village, seeking employment. You can then lead him to your home, tell him exactly where he should set up, place goods for him to sell on tables or in chests, set their prices, and you are in business. Additionally, you'll be able to talk to him to collect your profits and even change his name and what equipment and clothing he is wearing. Initially, they will just be limited to selling items, but in future releases, you will also be able to specify specific resources that you are looking to purchase from others. So if you want you know, a certain kind of ore or fur or meat, you can actually have this merchant saying, hey, you know, I'm looking for this. If you've got any, go ahead and, uh, and sell it to me and we'll give you money. It's a great way to handle the in-game economy in a game that's not super massive, so it doesn't really necessarily need an auction house. Instead, it has these player-run merchants on each shard or each server that the game will have. Uh, in addition, the most recent update newsletter talks about uh, how things are coming along with the shard clustering system, which will allow player-run servers to actually connect to each other, and you'll be able to use a portal to go from one to the next, so you could essentially have this massive world of connected online shards. Uh, very cool. It's probably the you know the big main feature that we're waiting for in shards online before it goes into actual alpha and hits up Steam for their early access version. Head on over to the Shards Online website, shardsonline.com if you want to know more. And last but not least, in some somber but still positive news, uh, VentureBeat.com is reporting that CEO and Gazillion Entertainment Company founder David Brevik has resigned as CEO and from the company. Acting CEO Dave Dorman has indicated that the split was a very amicable one, and Brevik obviously had been instrumental uh, in the creation and development of Marvel Heroes 2015 and 2016 and the original Marvel Heroes. David Brevik, he posted his own goodbye post on the Marvel Heroes uh, forums, and you can head on over there to read the whole thing. But, basically, this is what he says when it comes to, uh, to the, the split. It was difficult because I love Marvel Heroes. I love our community. I love the team I helped assemble. We have an incredibly talented staff, and I know that the game is in great hands. I believe in the future of the game, and I know a lot of the amazing things that are being worked on. It has gone. It has some really cool features coming that I know I will enjoy. Yes, I will still be playing the game. Yes, I will still be streaming it. I will still be sending the team feedback and information and suggestions. I may not work at Gazillion, but I love this game. I'm very proud of what we have accomplished. As for what's next, I'm going to go indie. I'm going to go back to doing the things I love the most, programming and making games. We will have more information about that in the future. Thank you team, community, and family for a wonderful seven years together. I am so lucky to be a part of such an incredible experience. Uh, congratulations, Dave Brevik, uh, on being able to go back and do the things that you really want to do. I think I speak for the entirety of the computer gaming world when I say we can't wait to see what you're next. I mean, you're one of the fathers of Diablo and one of the fathers of Marvel Heroes, so I'm kind of hoping it's another action RPG, but it might be nice to see you stretch your wings and try something new, too. Who knows? That'll do it for this week, folks. Sorry for the extra long MMO FTW. I hope it was jam-packed with news for you. You guys have a fantastic week, and as always, don't let a bad pug get you down. Make sure to level up your MMO knowledge by visiting MMORPG.com, subscribing to our YouTube channel, and by following us on social media. To catch up on the week's biggest MMO news, watch our latest MMO FTW. And to see if there's a better MMO out there for you, watch one of our latest First Impressions videos. Thanks for watching.